I have run an illegal pirate radio station for over seven years now. That means I don't have a license to legally operate a radio station. I don't even try to hide what I do. I have close to 300 likes on a Facebook page I created for my station, an online stream, and an FM signal that runs 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Over 3,000 songs that an automation system running on an old computer selects for the listener to hear. That's why I decided to tell the story of Pirate Radio from my perspective as a Pirate Radio operator. My name is Anthony Messina, and this is the Pirate Radio Experience. The first station to defy the U.S. government's regulation of radio was WJAZ in 1926, seen here dressed as literal pirates. WJAZ might not have known the impact their rebellious act would have on radio for almost a century later. In 1964, upon the MV Mi Amigo, Radio Caroline signed on, beginning a radio station like no other. Radio Caroline played current pop music and at one point had a regular audience of roughly 7 million people across the UK and parts of Central Europe. The seminal American pirate radio station signed on in 1988 when one Alan Weiner bought an old Japanese shipping vessel confiscated during a drug raid. They named the ship the Sarah, and in July of 1988, they sailed 12 miles off the coast of New York City and signed on Radio New York International, the first real offshore European-style pirate radio station in America. He sat down and talked to me about his experience with RNI. We wanted kind of access to the New York City market, but there was still no economical way to do it unless you had 30 or 40 million dollars, and nobody had that. So we decided, or I decided, to look at the uh, European model uh, with, you know, Radio Caroline and wonderful Radio London and other radio ships of the 60s and 70s. And um, I decided that the only legal way to cover those areas was to put a radio station on a foreign registered ship in international territory, and that's what we did in the mid-1980s. But what are the consequences of broadcasting illegally in more detail? Well, a common misconception is that the FCC actively seeks out pirates. They don't. They only respond to calls and emails sent in from the general public or other legal broadcasters that they have heard a suspected illegal station on air. The FCC then sends out a field investigation team who tracks down the signal and sends the residents a notice of unauthorized operations, known as an N-O-U-O. In the letter, the FCC gives out a warning, demanding the pirates cease operations or face potential fees and or jail time. Free radio is another nicer term for pirate radio. You know, we don't have a license and we are operating freely, just doing what we want. When we signed on air for the first time on July 17th, 2012, I already had that slogan in my mind, and that's what I started, you know, kind of seeing out to fruition. Around 2014 is when the station really started to take off. We started actually having different talk shows on our own station, and we got a lot more attention on our Facebook page. 2015 is when we got a larger transmitter and uh, an antenna on our roof now. And with that, we were able to expand our range to about seven miles um, around our communities. Getting the antenna on the roof, because one of the things we tried to do, or I tried to do, was get it as high as, as I physically possibly could. And it was a matter of getting it up there without it going through our neighbor's window, which uh, could have really been, you know, Kind of, kind of a problem. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was a little difficult, um, but we did it. You know, uh, it took some patience and and a lot of effort, but we got it up there, and um, it's solid too. You know, it's been through some heavy duty storms, and um, yeah. Around 2019 is really when we came into what the station is like today. When we are on air, our automation system song by song knows exactly what to pick from. So every song is categorized by the decade in which it came out. And so every hour, the music flows perfectly together, creating a 
sound in which people would want to keep it tuned. I had no idea that eight years later, we'd still be on air sounding better than I'd ever thought imaginable. Mm -hmm. It's made me so fulfilled and happy to run this radio station and have people enjoy what I do. I think that's why pirate radio is so special and why we risk so much to do what we do. Because when you're successful, it's such an amazing feeling. And it shows really that anyone with just a bit of knowledge and a little bit of money could make a, a successful pirate radio station. And I've been able to give exposure to other um, people and other bands who are looking for an outlet for their own art, for their own creativity. Pirate radio in our modern age still has a place amongst other forms of media. Pirate radio's unique ability to serve local communities, give platforms to local bands and serve those niche audiences is something that few other forms of media can do. So turn on your radio and you might just hear my station, broadcasting loudly and proudly because we are Free Radio for the free thinker. The earth sees the airwaves, sees the time. Cause lying to the people is the real crime. When it's all owned by corporations and theirs is the only word. We will seize the airwaves, speak freely and be heard. We will seize the airwaves, speak freely and be heard.